there we are. Hey, everyone. It is October 30th, Sunday. Hope everybody's having a great weekend. Um, my yesterday was, was quite busy, um, but not for reasons that uh, helped me with any of my D&D &D stuff. So a lot of uh, other things in, in life, nothing, nothing bad, just busy. So it kind of kept me from a lot of D&D &D things. So, but I hope everybody's having a great weekend. And uh, I guess you could say we're about halfway through, but uh, just one more day and then uh, we have to get back to the work week. So, um, so I had mentioned, I think I had mentioned yesterday that I had, uh, I had got the curse of Strahd and I had the deck of Karoka also on the way. So I was hoping that was going to get here yesterday in, uh, where I could actually go through it. Um, but maybe, maybe in a good thing, uh, it didn't actually get here till very late yesterday, so I didn't open it. And so today, I figured I would do uh, kind of an unboxing because I haven't, I haven't even opened it yet. And um, so we'll take a look at it together, and we'll run through the the rules of thing. I just kind of glanced through the rules at uh, in Curse of Strahd to see how it works, but I figure we'll open up the box, we'll take a look at the cards, and then maybe kind of do a little demo of how that is supposed to work. So, um, so yeah, so let's take a look and see. I'm going to flip over to um, a different view here. We'll go to this view, and there we have. Let me adjust my microphone here real quick. And hopefully everyone can still hear me, um, and it's not too loud, but this is the deck of Taroka, or Taroka deck. Um, so it is still in the package, and uh, let's go ahead and get it open. I didn't bring anything over here to actually pierce the edge of this thing, so give me a second. Hopefully the tip of a pen mechanical pencil will work. There we go. And put on the side. And there is the deck. Sorry, just trying to frame it up all nicely. All right, and then of course these are still wrapped. Uh, looks like there's a little. I can't tell which side that it looks like it goes there, but. Well, we might spend this entire stream with me trying to get this deck open. Maybe I should have thought that through a little better. It seems like that's where the tab is, but then we need to go to plan B. So, how's everyone doing? You know, as I'm enjoying watching me struggle with opening a piece of get some plastic off here. If uh, anybody has any thoughts on anything, love to hear those in the in the chat. There's like a 20 second delay, but we're apparently going to have like about a 10 minute delay as I try to open up this thing. Ah, uh, live television. So I feel something. There we go. I might have gotten enough there to grab it. All right, so the first thing to remember for those of you that are buying the deck of Taroka is that this little strip that's supposed to be used to open it is uh, very well buried inside the, uh, the plastic, so it's almost inaccessible. And whew, those are some rigid cards. So from what I read, I'll get that out of the way. What I read, there's 54 cards in this deck and they are broken down into 
several different categories. The first is the Sorry, I'm going to flip over. I'm, I've got a cheat sheet. I'm, o I'm over in, on a different screen. I'm in D&D &D Beyond looking through the, the, detail, the details of the deck. So there's basically the high deck, and then there's the common deck, which has four suits with ten cards each. So the high deck has... So this is the high deck. It has all the crowns on it. And so I believe there's ten of these. And... Ooh, these are squeaky. So there you go. That's the that's the high deck, and uh, so the back side of the cards is just uh, whatever that is. So when we're working on this, from what I've read, so the high deck would get separated from the other ones, and then the other ones have have uh, suits, and so you have a. The, the common deck then has is broken into suits called swords, stars, coins, and glyphs. And so the uh, so this would probably be stars, I'm guessing. Yeah, so this is stars. And you have a essentially a card that is that is the highest value. And it doesn't have a number, it just has the suit in all four corners. And then you have one card that or excuse me, then you have cards that are numbered in the suit from one through nine. So, so that's the stars. And then you have now this is the swords. And so it's the warrior is the is the highest one, and then from one through nine. And then this would be the probably the coins since it's the rogue that is the highest and yeah that looks like a coin in the in the four corners there. So these are all things related to coins, merchants and beggars and thieves, tax collectors, misers. And then you have this would be the glyphs. So naturally you have a priest, so all the different uh, magical or more. Uh, religious, I guess, <laughs> traitor aspects of it. So that's the, uh, that's the four suits that you have. And so you, you essentially have the two, two decks. Sorry, let me get that out of the, my light. It's a little, got a little bit of a glare. So the high deck is just nothing but the crowns and it's 14 cards. And then the common deck has the four suits with 10 cards in each suit. And the way this works, so I'm just going to look at um, the the gist of a card reading if you I'm, I'm in curse of Strahd and I'm just taking a look at so you you split the the deck into the two different cop Ooh, it's a little struggle struggle to get the cards open struggle to talk so the 14 cards from the high deck and then and then the rest of the cards the 40 cards in the common deck and the idea is that you shuffle each each deck and keep the two decks separate. I am going to do an awful job shuffling because I'm trying to do it uh, relatively quickly while we're just kind of going through here. And then I will shuffle these very poorly, so don't think that this is how I normally shuffle cards. I usually do a, a riffle shuffle, but uh, I'm just trying to get it mixed up a little bit here. I don't want anybody to, uh, you know, slander my card shuffling abilities. This is, I, I actually do a much better job than this, I promise. All right, there's the, our two decks. Then we draw the top three cards from the common deck and lay them down like so. I hope I don't run out of room here. In that, those positions and then top two cards from the high deck, and we put them in these positions. Sorry, that's gonna, here, let me move these out of the way. Since we're actually done with those now, I'll put those off to the side, and we'll put these up where everyone can see them. And then the last card from the high deck goes there. And so that is our, our deck. My little bit of OCD is gonna cause me to make sure that those are perfectly straight. All right, and then once they're all five, then you flip over card number one, which is this one, and the text is 
this card tells of history, knowledge of the ancient. You will, oh, this card tells of history, knowledge of the ancient will help you better understand your enemy. And then there's, I guess, box text for the particular cards. So let me see if I can find that. Oops, that didn't help me. So this card is the torturer, and it's the the suit is the swords. And oh, I see. Okay, so I did the swords, and it's the torturer, which is the nine of swords. So the torturer indicates the coming of suffering or merciless cruelty. One is one who is irredeemably evil or sadistic. So that's not a good thing. Then, then I flip over card two. This card tells of a powerful force for good and protection, a holy symbol of great hope. And this one obviously didn't shuffle great. So this is the dictator, the eight of swords. And this one indicates that all that is wrong with government and leadership, those who rule through fear and violence. So that's what that one indicates. And then the third card is this one, which is the traitor, the nine of glyphs. Uh, so the traitor, this is a card of power and strength. It tells of a weapon of vengeance, sword of sunlight. And so the nine of glyphs, betrayal by someone close and trusted, weakening or loss of faith. And then we do card four. So we basically just circle around and go through each one. This card sheds light on one who will help you greatly in the battle against darkness. This is Strahd's enemy. And so now we're in the high deck. So we've got the horseman, which is death, disaster in the form of the loss of wealth or property, a horrible defeat, or the end of a bloodline. And then the last card is Strahd, which is what you might expect here. Your enemy is a creature of darkness whose powers are beyond mortality. This card will lead you to him. And so the card that we drew here is the executioner. The imminent death of one rightly or wrongly convicted of a crime, false accusations, and unjust prosecution. So that is the, the way that you read the cards. And then there's a whole section talking about the different suits. And this indicates locations. So like in the, the swords, so like this card was the nine of swords. And the number then indicates... Um, where something would be so a treasure so here we have the nine of swords and it is it says it's the torture and there is a town where all is not well there you will find a house of corruption and within a dark room full of ghosts full of still ghosts so um and i guess that indicates the treasure is hidden in the attic of burgomaster's mansion in valaki sorry i should probably shouldn't be giving all this away for those that are going to play this so um but the i think the idea the example i had seen on another video was that this is kind of like the game clue where you have the, the the person the location and the weapon and you put you you shuffle the cards and you put those into an envelope and that's basically what everybody's trying to figure out here you're doing the same thing. You're coming up with uh, a set of things of some stuff that's going to happen and where it's going to happen, and uh, and but you're kind of revealing that in advance. Um, I, I don't know that you're revealing the where the specifically the thing is, but you're you're giving some clues as to where things are going to happen during the course of this adventure. So um, so it's an interesting little mechanic, and just my uh, I just noticed that all of these cards are upside down. And that's just not going to work for me. So somehow I managed to get all the cards upside down. So there you go. My, my OCD rearing its head again. So that is the, uh, the Taroka deck or the deck of Taroka. Um, and uh, this is my first time looking at it. Just 
obviously just got it last night and that's generally how it goes. I will be spending some time trying to figure a little more about how that works. It's a, a mechanic within Curse of Straw that I hear people like um, and makes it interesting and maybe one of the reasons why Curse of Straw is considered one of the best modules for 5th edition. So, um, yeah, so that's that. Um, we'll see if I can spend some time on that today. The other thing that I wanted to do is um, I wanted to mention, and this is this is a little bit of, of self-promotion, but um, I, because I've been really working on my, on getting this YouTube channel going, and one of the things I got access to recently was the, the community section. And so just uh, wanted to mention that I have out there in the community section, I've put a couple polls out there and then I've been trying to post some, some things. There's not much out there right now, but, um, you know, just another thing to check out. If you're interested, uh, I'll put some polls out there. There's I'll plate paste or uh, post some images of things. And, uh, I, I don't know that there's a way for me to post just like text stuff. So that stuff will still be on Twitter, at least for the time being. So, um, but anyway, it's another, another thing that I'm going to try to use and see if, uh, if anybody's interested in, in doing that, if we get, uh, some good engagement from folks, then I'll, I will continue doing that. Um, so I like to try out different things when they come along and that's it. So, uh, that's where I'm, I'm at today is working on still trying to find some time to dig into Curse of Strahd. I, you know, it's been three days since I said I was going to start reviewing Curse of Strahd and I have yet to really even open the book. So I at least got the deck and was able to, to take a look at some of that. Um, so hopefully I have a little bit of time with that today, though there is some things around the house I need to get done. So that might get in my way. And then we're back to work tomorrow. So, you know, that obviously cuts into my day as well. But all of that aside, uh, I hope everybody has a great Sunday. Um, the uh, work week is out there lurking for all of us, so please try to make the most of today as best you can. Uh, and until tomorrow, take care.